So welcome back then, it's time for our first match of the day. It's going to be Evil Geniuses versus Chest Bumping dra uh, Dragon Bones. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful there. Uh, a quick shot, the biggest question that's on everyone's mind is can the Snoopy Stare penetrate the hair of the Dragon Bones? I guess it depends who you're asking. Some people are going to love the hair, some people are going to love the stare. So it's going to be up to them. See what I did there? That was a brilliant <laughs> line. That was a brilliant line. I, I'm, I'm torn because, you know, I used to have the hair, but now I don't really have the hair. Yeah, so you, you I'm kind of sitting on the fence for this one. You, you lost it in dramatic fashion as well. It, it was dramatic and also a sad day in <laughs> Joe Miller history. Uh, so let's take a closer look then at the two teams that we've got going on here. For EG we have Wicked, Froggen, Yellow Peak, Crepo and of course Snoopy. And of course for the Dragonborns it is Spontex, Shushay, Hosan, Muvert and Maluno. Two amazing, amazing lineups and I'm just really unsure what to say about Dragonborns. This is their first game in European LCS. We saw them come through the qualifiers. A very emotional time it was for them. Uh, you have the likes of Hosan in there, their AD carry who, you know, we saw him playing a lot of Draven. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see whether that's going to come up here again today. Yeah, we'll have to see, but let's have a look at the players. You can see Shushe is the one that we picked as the matchup for this particular game. There's a lot of questions. Spontex did well in the top lane. Hosan did well in the bottom lane, but Shushe against Froggen, I mean, he's such a character. He's been around since the whole of season one, preseason one, season one with Fnatic, and you know has been bouncing around teams over the last few months. And we'll see if uh, settling his roots with Dragonborns is really going to help propel him to season three victory. Yeah, and obviously something else to mention in that lineup as well. No more broken shard. We saw Correct. at the end of the qualifiers they now have Maluno, former Curse and uh, LOL Pro player or jungler in their team as well. Well, let's have a close look then at their opponents in this one. Of course, Evil Genius is the former CLG EU. Everyone knows them. We've highlighted Frog and again that match up in the middle going to be really instrumental as to how this game all goes through and well is there's got to be an Anivia ban we saw it last week you leave Anivia open it doesn't matter if you think you can counter it I don't know if there is a, uh, a frog and counter is there I don't believe there is any way to counter the frog and Anivia he knows how to play every single matchup he knows how to do everything you know with that particular bird I must point out that last week when uh, Ocelot picked Anivia and uh, Peke played Caitlyn to counter it there was a bit of discussion at the back and, and he said well I asked frog what would you do if you were against Caitlyn he says probably suicide so maybe <laughs> there is at least some hard counter but nevertheless, we'll see how the picks and bands go. The champions and the players, they're ready for this. And we're about to get this kick away very soon. Well, we've heard, we know the both of the team's lineups. Let's take a look at what they both had to say about each other before the match. Playing Dragonborns, relatively new team. We get excited very easily, but we're a very emotional team. We're gonna, we're gonna watch all the matches that they're playing. Uh, we have to keep practicing and uh, keep watching Kanemi. Normally, if all goes well, then we play our game. This is all predictable. We got this. We just gotta focus. Like, stop messing around and just get with it. We're Dragonborns! So we hear from them there, and I think confidence from both sides. Dragonborns, as we said, they've not played yet. We don't know 100% what to really expect from them in the European LCS. We saw them at the qualifiers. They didn't slide through without any problems. Some no. of those games were really difficult matches for them. It's true. And, you know, they, were, they give off the, the vibe that they're a bit of a confidence team as well. You know, they have the ability yeah. to make plays happen early. And the question just comes in, once they get the advantage, what do they do with it? You know, I'm very interested to see how Hosan plays. When he was playing Ezreal, there was a number of arcane shifts that were extremely aggressive. He would go in, like, on the front line. Yeah. And... They, he got away with it, he made it work at the qualifiers, but if you do that against the likes of Evil Geniuses, they know how to deal with the overaggression, and they're probably going to blow you up. Yeah, they are a team that we've seen time and time again can quite happily sit back and take up all the aggression and then push out when they know they can make it. We're into the champion select anyway. Let's have a look at the bans here. Vi taken out by EG. We saw Shushe use it in the qualifier. We've seen him in the jungle already last year, uh, last year, last week with Herkubot. Uh, then you've got Sin Shao, a very standard pick along, uh, ban along with uh, Kha'Zix, who is the third ban here for EG. And then on the other side, talk about picking up, uh, you know, banning completely against Frog on here. Anivia, Twisted Fate looks three big target bans onto the man in the middle. Very, very true, but what they have done is they've allowed everything else to slide through, and you can see immediately Evil Genius have locked in that, that uh, Kale pick. We've seen Snoopy running it in the jungle last week, and it was a step out of his comfort zone, if I can go so, so far as to say that, because we tend to see fair. Snoopy playing those support, those sort of utility junglers, those tanky, frontline, you know, survivability-type champs, and, you know, he played DPS champs, he played Zen 
in the jungle. He played Kale in the jungle. And, you know, once again, going to lock it away. So this is us assuming that's where it's going to go for this particular matchup. And a lot of respect from Dragonborns going onto Froggen's uh, mid play. Well, let's have a look then what Dragonborns are going to go with from this one. Jace already locked in there. We've seen how strong Jace can be. Uh, he's very versatile as well, obviously, with the stance changes. He can play him in the middle lane. He's fine in that top lane. Hell, we've even seen him being played as an AD carry. That wouldn't be, you know, the most shocking thing that we've seen so far in the European LCS. And a Shen. That's, uh, for me, uh, a pick that if he's gone through the bands, at some point, some team's going to pick him up. Something that we do need to point out, we're up to the fourth uh, pick already. Olaf has still not been secured. He's neither been picked or banned. We need to remind everybody we are up to patch 3.01, so it's yep. live minus one. So it's what we have been playing on for a little while. I think Olaf has had some minor tweaks. I believe the armor penetration his ultimate has been nerfed just a little bit, but he doesn't seem to be the super high priority picks. And it does look like a Varisona. So this is going to be the first time we see a different bottom lane for the Evil Geniuses. Yeah, all three games so far in the European LCS, they have gone with that Lulu Caitlyn combo. Uh, so this is a, a very much different pick for EG. Sona and Varus, we know. You know, those ultimates can work very nice yep. together with the chain in there, with the crescendo going across them as well. Uh, so interested to see how Yellow Pete and, and uh, Crepo do with those two in the bottom lane. Uh, but what do we expect now from Dragonborns? I mean, they are a team that have already shown they're quite versatile in their picks. They're definitely not going for the standard kind of build. Well, I, you know, I want to go back to the Olaf pick because you've got the slow out of Kale, you've got Stun, you've got Snare, you know, out of the different champions and slows. And I think... Considering Olaf would be a great, great pick here, purely because of Ragnarok, the amount of power that that's going to give you in those team fights to get away from yeah. that crowd control, to get away from, you know, the ability of being locked down. I don't know if it's going to fit into the rest of the comp, and it does look like they're going to put a complete spanner in the works right now, <laughs> considering a Leona and a Kali combination. So it has been locked in, and, you know, we said at the beginning, Dragonborns, they're, they're, they're not afraid to try different compositions. They're not afraid to try different you know, oddball comps and yeah it's looking strange right now because i don't know who's going away well, the thing is, we've seen Akali already. Uh, yep. Seems to be coming back to light a little bit more. We saw Wicked actually playing twice so far. Yep. Out of the three games that they've had, the other one, he played that Shen where he picked up his famous Bricked name That's by it. now, I think uh, we could call it famous. Uh, but on the other side, EG, there's a Renekton. We saw him being played on uh, Wednesday night, no, Thursday night, night, if I can get my days right. That's, that's the whole time difference thing for me. Uh, <laughs> it was played so much over in the US, and we've seen the likes pretty much of Gambit, who have really gone yeah. heavily towards this Renekton. Yeah, you know, for the last couple of you know weeks, that season three, Renekton seems to have come back to the limelight. He's a, a very high priority pick. He's got the ability to shred armor, which is very, very good. Yeah. He's got very good AoE damage once he throws on his ultimate and he's allowed some time to, to run back and forth. Uh, we've seen uh, in, during the replays and, and talking about the matchups when they played against Fnatic, Darren just committed with their Renekton, threw on his ulti and just chunked everybody's HP down so, so quickly. So it's a scary, scary champion, scary lock-in. With Cho'Gath being secured, this makes me think this is going to be AP Kale in the mid and Snoopy's yeah. going to pick up his Cho, who everybody knows how well he plays that champion. Yeah. Well, that would be, you know, we talked when we first saw that Kale locked in about it being jungle Kale. Obviously, Kale is one of those champions yeah. as well that you can switch around all over the place. Cho'Gath, for me, will be with Snoopy. There's no doubt about that one. Over on the other side, guess what? Draven. It is going to be Draven on the bottom lane. So Hosan is bringing it out. We've seen Draven a couple of times at the NALCS, which was awesome because he was used to such great effect. I'm a cutie pie, if I remember correctly, going, you know, godlike with him. So it's a powerful champion, extreme, you know, early game power. And against the Sona, if Crepo's a little overstepped, a little bit past that safety zone, those spinning axes are going to hit really, really hard. Combo with some of the CC. And I think that's a first blood risk potential in that bottom lane. Well, we've seen that Hosan can play Draven. We've seen him play it time and time again at the LCS EU qualifiers over in Warsaw. You know, it was a fantastic champion to the point where teams were banning it out and in, in towards the later stages. So I, I think that could be a real dangerous one right now coming in for uh, EG. But we've got the two lineups in here. You can see Evil Genius is on your screen there looking very, very focused at this point. Uh, they did, uh, they were here quite early on actually. I uh, was sat with them eating a little bit before we got started here and they are ready for today they said that they've not had the most time this week to really practice it's been a lot of theory crafting uh but also i did hear which uh and uh, we could be probably happy to hear that wicked has been practicing being aggressive which might mean that evil geniuses even when they're ahead finish the game before 60 minutes well we can only hope we, we can only <laughs> hope looking at this composition though from the dragonborns it reminds me a lot of the composition we've seen from uh, evil geniuses last week where they actually 
actually lost to SK. They ran that Jace in the middle lane. They ran a Kali up in the top lane. It was obviously the Kate Lulu. But they tried to play super, super aggressive for early towers and for early map dominance. And around the 10, 12 minute mark, they tried to push the top lane tower and failed. And that was really where they lost that steamroller effect. I wonder if the Dragonborns are going to try something similar because they have the, you know, the comp to do so. You've got some early, good, reliable CC from Leona, good early damage from Draven, and of course, you know, all the pressure they can put down with those uh, Shock Blast combos from Jace. So here we go then. First game of the LCS Europe Week 2. It's EG versus Dragonborns. Let's see how this one gets underway. Trevor, with the compositions that we've got here coming out of both teams, do you fancy anything in any action at level 1? You know what? It's very, very risky, and I think with having the ability of either the Rupture uh, you know, from Snoopy. Dragonborns have got to be very scared of it. They do have the on-hit stun from Leona and, of course, the taunt from Shen, but it would really weaken their early game uh, presence on the map in the jungle in the lane. So you can see Dragonborns, they've placed an early ward and they immediately backed away. So I don't think we're going to see any fights unless Dragonborns get caught up. Both teams moving as a solid five, though, so if anything does happen, it's going to be very explosive. Yeah, we saw the pink ward being placed down by Crepo to get rid of that Dragonborn's ward on the top side of the river. You saw EG moving in towards the enemy red buff. They've put a ward down in that side brush as well. And down on the bottom side, you can see that Dragonborn's done exactly the same, very much uh, mirrored right now. But that one ward there in the river is giving full vision for EG. They know that Dragonborn's were on this bottom side of the map, and that might mean that they will take away this red buff here right at the very get-go. We'll see if they can seal that buff. If they do, it will be a great success. You can see Akali now just moving towards this brush. Going to walk into danger range. Yeah, there's a ward down. Spontex runs into trouble. This could be bad news for Spontex as he does get knocked up. He's forced to flash away. That's a very, very early flash used by Dragonborns. And that's going to be something that Snoopy thinks, all right, that's brilliant for me. I'm going to bully this top lane out. Yeah, definitely. He's going to pick up some buffs, immediately put some pressure on that top lane, try and keep Spontex down down, keep him behind. And a champion like Akali, it's definitely somebody you want to be stomping on early. Don't allow her to farm. Don't allow her to pull ahead. Um, Wicked used it, I think it was against the Copenhagen Wolves, and it just became this unstoppable, immovable object. And they cannot let Spontex do it, because if he does get ahead, he can stay there. We've seen it in, at uh, the Warsaw Qualifiers when he was playing Olaf. Right now, Shen is working his way towards his bottom lane. There is a blue ward in that tri bush, so they know that he's gone up there. You can see Leona has gone to join him, and they're trying to counter that whole losing the red buff on the top side of their own jungle. They're only there with two, though, so they need to be a little bit careful here. You can see that Crepo's coming around, and this may just be enough to actually force them to back away from it. Look at Crepo, he's right in the middle of them, actually taking a lot of damage. Snoopy now going to come around and try and force them away as well, as we are going to see Jace and Kale getting in involved Snoopy down to below half HP. Kale was forced back away from that one, so some very uh, not even hands-on, it's more of just taunting each other going in there as Jace and um, Daria, uh, Darius are, are going to join in there. Darius? Draven is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> getting in there as well. Those Ds catching me out for Dragon Balls. Uh, but in the end, you know, they've managed to take that buff, which is going to be the important thing. Yeah, they, they stole the buff away, and you know, we say stole, they equalized the buff. Let's put it that way, because his own red buff was taken. If we have a look at the CS1 Wise. Draven, a little bit ahead. I mean, it's tiny, right? So you can't really equate uh, gains and losses right now. They simply made even what was taken from them. So good play from Dragonborns. They reacted very well, which was impressive to see. You know, they invaded the jungle. You've seen the bottom lane moving up. Maybe a tiny bit late. If, if the bottom lane had been there a bit earlier, they could have saved more pots, done that a little bit quicker. But nevertheless, it's good coordination. It's good calling. And it's concise, planned team effort from Dragonborns. It makes me, you know, think very highly of them at this early stage in the game already. Yeah, and one thing that Dragonborns have certainly got in this bottom lane is aggression. Leona to get right in there, then uh, Draven just to absolutely hammer away on them the whole time, and that's something that is going to force EG to be that little bit more defensive down on this bottom side. Obviously, Crepo is just hit level 2. We know Sony is very, very squicky, uh, squishy. If she gets caught out by this Leona, could spell some real danger. Huge damage there with a spinning axe and just one auto attack. Crepo only has, what, six bars of life, and he loses a full chunk from a single auto attack. If he does get stunned up at all, at all, two or three auto attacks and, you know, uh, uh, the exhaust, etc., is going to be enough time for him to chunk him down. Crepo has returned to lane already with that regrowth pendant, and he's going to be allowing that health regen over time to really make dividends as Snoopy's trying to sniff something out, but Spontex under the tower don't really think he's dive-worthy right now. 
No, and Wicked knows that he has to be careful there, as I said in the uh, pregame, and forget that because they're actually diving in towards this bottom lane. Yeah, every single time they deal damage and the Crepo is forced back, you can see that spinning axe of the passive. Oh, up in the top lane, though. Spontex forced to go, and it does get jumped on. Ignite is not available. Heal is out there, and he manages to survive. And look at that. You see how low Wicked has gone from it. That was a real dangerous situation for them. That Shedden coming across, really helping out. Spontex was feeling safe in his position there, as Wicked is currently recalling. Maluna is going to come through. Wicked will get away safely from that one. And, I mean, if Shen had been able to spot him in time there, that Shadow Dash probably would have spelled the end for him. Yeah, for sure. Interesting, both Flash and Ignites uh, are available here. I mean, Spontex burned his earlier, but um, Cho, uh, Cho did Flash to get to safety a moment ago. No Ignite from Wicked. The Fortitude part was drank by Spontex. That was where that, that HP burst came from, and I was wondering where on earth the heal came from, and I was just looking at his items. So with the Fortitude part done, he's got no advantage um, in the early game. It was literally just there as a life-saving effort, but it did save his life. It prevented him giving up first blood. And look at his itemizations. Two cloth armors to return to lane, really feeling the pressure of Wicked Renekton. Yep, and we'll see how he can deal with that one. His flash will be coming back up, though, uh, in a little while, which is something that he burned very early on. You see in the middle, Shushe and Frog on that. We've not actually really looked at this lane up until now because it's been busy all over uh, everywhere else on the map, but this lane could be a really interesting one. You know, Frog and known as one of the best in the world. Shushe, he was known as one of the best in the world before. Then he, you know, got, uh, dropped from Fnatic, and everyone was saying, well, he's passed his sell-by date here, but Shushe in the qualifiers, the whole, the whole meta, a change that's allowed for a bit more versatility in this middle lane, I think has really helped Shushi out. Yeah, it's so true because now that we see a little bit more uh, non-standard champions being played in that middle lane, it's almost allowed Shushi to come back into it by playing, you know, champions like Jace, champions like Vi. Uh, a few months ago, he was also playing a lot of Eve mid, even after she took some nerfs, etc. You know, he's playing slightly different champs and it's just working into his favor, especially being a very aggressive player. It was one of the problems in Season 2, um, you know, in the early stages, he, he dives often he pushes beyond uh, the safety lines and that was ended up what costing him a lot of deaths because the game was a lot slower back then now that it's much faster it just fits his play style it fits his aggressive nature and you know he's doing well and they're holding their own he is a little bit behind nothing really notable right now yeah we can take a quick look at the cs actually 49 to 31 in this top lane good lead so far from wicked we saw him doing brilliantly in the farm last week as well middle lane 56 to 45 not a superb difference there either in this bottom lane it's going the other way uh, it's really the only place to be honest where it's really working out in terms of the farm for dragonborns and that's 50 to 35 you can see there in that top lane wicked certainly is not lying to me at dinner when he said his practice being a that little bit more aggressive and hasn't been afraid at all we've seen maluno he he was up in the top lane a few moments ago sniffing for a gank trying to set something up but you know with not a lot of damage on spontex he doesn't have any additional ability power or attack damage right now it's going to be difficult to kill a renekton shen not really well known for being you know a super high damage ganker they're going to have some crowd control but you know wisely maluno backed away he's going to wait for spontex to get some more items before he decides to go aggressive or maybe even ask for you know some help from Shushe with his teleport. Yeah, we've not really uh, touched on that, but obviously the teleport for these mid laners has been a critical thing in the past. The question is, can you use it enough early game to get your lane snowballing? That's one thing that it's there for at the end. We can see in gold now, it's pretty much even. It's switching between, it must be like around about 150, 200 gold right now. As we are seeing once again, Maluno coming into this top lane, Wicked, maybe in a spot of bother here. He does, however, have his flash still available. He's obviously up to level seven, so he has that ultimate to give him that extra survivability. The question is, will Malono even realize that Wicked's still there? He'd gone away back towards his golems, and Wicked says, well, I'm just getting straight out of there. Yeah, just getting to safety, making sure he's not overextended. The lane is now pushing in his favor as well, so he can now make Spontex overextend, and my thinking, or the, the, the thought process probably there is just, well, let's see if we can make Spontex step a little bit past that uh, river safety point, make him come onto our side of the map, and allow Snoopy to set up a gank. We're approaching the 10 minute mark and there hasn't been anything too exciting right now in terms of the ganks of the lane pressure. You know, one very early gank from EG, but both teams playing relatively passively and you just get the feeling that they're actually feeling one another out. They're just seeing how are they playing this, what do they want to do and where can we go with it. 
But Hosan's driver now a 30 CS lead in this bottom lane. It is a significant difference at this stage in the matchup. Yeah, and he's got, you know, to counter that whole sustain that you have with a Sonar in, in the opposition, he's gone straight in towards that vamp set. So he's getting plenty of health back here just from attacking those minions. We can see in the top lane, Akali picking up the Seeker's Arm Guard, obviously a new item coming in there. Actually a perfect one in this scenario as well, giving you the armor, giving you that AP as well. And it works against every single champion on the other side. You know, Kale and, you know, Auto attack reliant, keep in mind there are a magic, there's a lot of magic damage, but there's a lot of auto attack damage. Renekton, and Varus, all auto attackers, even Cho'Gath if he get, can get in range, you know, those feral spikes is focusing around the auto attack. So it's a smart, a smart pickup, smart item, but he's uh, very far behind. 30 CS, he does have a massive, massive creep wave, so we'll see how good his mechanical skill is and how well he can farm with the pressure of Wicked here. But, uh, you know, Dragonborn's just falling a little bit behind in this middle and this top lane. Uh, but we still, ten and a half minutes in, don't have a first blood just yet. As you said, about a 500 gold difference currently for EG. Maluno not been too impressed with him so far. He's, he's actually been quite a lot in that top lane, but not really been able to do anything uh, with himself in that top lane. Bottom lane for EG, you know, they knew that they were in a dangerous, they had dangerous opposition in the form of that Leona who's going to get in there, use those brilliant crowd control effects that she has to really lock down a kill for this Draven. But so far, you know, Yellow P and Crepo played this one textbook. And the mechanical skills from Hosan are so good here. I've been watching him catching the spinning axes the entire time we've been in this bottom lane and we do see Crepo does get caught a beautiful stun comes out he's gonna get caught up yeah they're gonna go in on towards Hosan there is a stand United coming down and this could end in nothing once again as both teams went pretty much all in ulti's popped all over the place actually uh, the crescendo from Crepo was saved there I think to maybe lock down one Snoopy had got there see Maluno still on this bottom side around by the golems has to be a little bit careful himself there that he doesn't get too aggressive but Again, you've got Hosan, who the little bit of damage that he did take has already taken back thanks to that Vamp Scepter, um, and they're just going to keep pressuring here. Yeah, huge creep wave once again. So Yellow Pete forced to farm under the tower. That solar flare from Crepo, uh, from Movert, was very, very powerful. It just zoned out the Evil Geniuses players, prevented them committing, because if they did, they were getting it stunned up, and it just bought Maluno the full time to get the channel that Stand United. Maluno's been sniffing around these double golems for a little while now and just poking, keeping Snoopy at bay. But, you know, Dragonborns, they're holding their own. They're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They started that engagement on the bottom lane, but, you know, unfortunately weren't able to convert it to a kill. Let's have a quick look through then what we've got in terms of items in the last couple of moments. There's a Hex Drinker finished up there by Wicked. Pretty standard uh, to what you'd expect there uh, in the top lane against an AP-based champion. Uh, what else have we got? Boots of Mobility on Cho'Gath there for Snoopy. Um, the tier finish for Jace obviously spamming like mad there. As we see Froggen use his ultimate there on himself. Obviously he's very worried still about what Shushi can do with that single Doran's Blade in for the damage. Yeah, very plain, very uh, you know interesting he actually used Reckoning there to pick up a, a last hit. I don't know if that was a misclick or if that was intentional, but, you know, using his spells just to farm Wicked has overextended a tiny bit, but it doesn't look like Spontex wants to pick this fight right now. Maluno, level 7 to the level 10 of Wicked. He's literally just going to walk away. With uh, Renekton's ultimate and with Hex Drinker, the damage shield and the health that he's going to gain, I don't think Spontex will ever be able to 1v1 kill Wicked because it's just going to be so hard to get through, you know, the, the 500 extra HP or shield damage that he needs to get through. Yeah, but I think that's the beauty of it as well in that comp that they can have Shen come straight in on top of him, try and get Wicked to really commit to taking that Akali out and then call his bluff by coming in there. Uh, we do have Brutalizer now done there for Jace as we are going to see the uh, ultimate coming out in that bottom lane just for that extra little bit of farm for uh, Draven as he is actually working himself back. Snoopy now in this middle lane and they are going to be working in towards this tower, you know. We talk about how the, the metagame has kind of shifted to these very early aggressive pushes to get in towers down quickly. We've not got a uh, first kill yet at 13 minutes, 50 seconds in. There's no towers gone down. The gold's still very, very even. This is a super close match. I'm going to be very interested to see how these you know first couple of team fights match up because there's such a, a, a weird matchup. You know, see Froggen going very low from Shushe's poke there. There's not a lot of ability power on Froggen just yet, so he'll start hitting a little bit harder as he starts working towards towards, you know, some more AP items, but you've got a very AOE CC focus from Evil Geniuses, you know, the Rupture, the Feral Scream, Chain of Corruption Crescendo. On the other side, you've only really got Leona for 
large scale AOE CC and then the taunt from Maluna, which is very situational and, and very dependent. So Dragonborn's maybe trying to play a bit of a poke game, get somebody low, then all in onto one champion and try to roll over, you know, five versus four. If they get collapsed upon, if they get caught out by the Chain of Corruption and Crescendo, I think the amount of time that it's going to buy Renekton's you know, ultimate and those Righteous Fury, the, the AoE splash damage from Kale, it's going to shred that very, very squishy lineup's HP bars. And we have to look at the CS here once again, because this bottom lane is getting a little bit dangerous for Yellow Pete. They're 136 to 95, so he's got a nice 40 CS lead here. It's not often that we'll say uh, that against someone who's playing against Yellow Pete uh, in this bottom lane, as we are going to be seeing Maluno here coming on towards Wicked. This could very well be first blood. Oh, well, it does manage to flash to safety after using the Slice and Dyson. Talking about those CS numbers, the CS that Yellow Pete is missing has been picked up by Crepo. So, you know, he's managed to earn himself a good good amount of gold, um, you know, at least ensuring that that doesn't get lost to tower or to other minions. And we'll see how that's going to help Crepo um, in terms of the support versus support because he is very, very squishy. He's, he's got a Doran's shield just to help take the damage from Draven in these early exchanges. And it's going to help him out, especially against the Shock Blast combos of uh, uh, um, Jace as well. Yeah, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to see that support player taking that CS. If it's going to go to waste, obviously you're going to take it. But even if he's taking some that probably Yellow Pete would want him to have himself, I don't think it's a bad thing. And Spontex here going to get engaged upon, but Wicked will back away. And we see down in the bottom lane, the Chain of Corruption comes out, a Crescendo has locked them down, Yellow Pete's low, the Stand United comes up from Host and is now Crepo is forced out of the fight. Shen, uh, actually no, that was Barrier. Now we see Yellow Pete flashes forward, throws out those Hail of Arrows, picks up a kill up in the top lane. Uh, Wicked's managed to secure one as well. Shushe forced to use that Teleport in this bottom lane. He's going to at least even it out now. It's two to one as Crepo is trying to get to safety. Maluno will be able to pick up this kill with the help of the turret. Two for two at the end of the day, but you know, Host with this massive CS advantage and even the item advantage wasn't actually able to win out that uh, that trade yeah and it, i think he was got a little bit too clever for himself there actually uh, i mean it was a great move in the end for yellow pete to get his e off um and pop uh, and, and pop Hosan down. I mean, he would have got away if that hadn't happened. We can see in the meantime, while well, that's all gone down, EG have pushed their first turret in this top lane down. Middle turret has gone down as well. The problem that Frogger now has is that the entire Dragonborn team is going to try and close in. He's headed up north towards the safety of Cho'Gath and Renekton. We'll see how uh, Dragonborns can really switch around and react to this one. It does look like they're just going to decide to back yeah. off. They didn't really have the ultimates to pick that particular fight, so wisely they start to back away and played safe. They got a dragon, at least. So, you know, they trade two kills for two. They lost their both middle and top towers. And other than that bottom lane, they haven't put too much damage on, you know, uh, the evil genius's towers. So EG are going to be happy with that trade. Even though they gave up the Drake, they've now got such a huge amount of map control in their top area of the map. If they do decide to go aggressive, if they decide to, you know, push quite heavily, etc. And Yellow Pete, if you take a look at the way he's maxing his champion, five points into Halo of Arrows and then three into that Blighted Quiver. So no points into his Piercing Arrow just yet. And it's just interesting to note how these players uh, skill their champs. Yeah, and that's that's a great thing that it's always good to see, to watch Varus because of that Blight stacking up there. Uh, and you saw the flash to get his ear, his ear off to finish that kill there was pretty impressive stuff, to be honest. Uh, but as you said, leaves us 2 2 on kills, but EG. That just that middle outer turret, even if that was the only thing that they've got, that they've got in response to losing that dragon, they would have been happy. But taking the top outer turret as well is a great, great pickup for them. Uh, I think they did decent damage to the top inner turret as well, if I'm uh, not totally mistaken. Yeah, it's below half HP already. So overall, great stuff coming out of EG. We've got Wicked actually invading in towards their jungle now. As uh, he's going to walk straight into Maluno, and he's got Shushi off the side. Wicked needs to be very, very careful from this. Frogan actually coming in will put the ultimate down onto him. And I'm not sure that Jace will be able to chase up for a kill. No, he's going to back off. Yeah, Shushe's little knockback did push him a little bit to safety. Snoopy now tries to put some pressure on this bottom lane, but Hosan is just going to be able to get that little movement speed boost and just sidestep the rupture. So no real danger there. He's got that Bloodthirster, which is starting to be stacked up. It is actually at full stacks already. And the bottom lane tower, you can see the HP at the bottom left there. It's not going to be long before Evil Geniuses lose that tower. And we're going to start seeing these team engagements. We're going to start seeing these 3v3, 4v4, 5v5s, and Dragon Lords need to win them. They're a little bit behind in gold, and I think their straight up 5v5 potential might be a little bit weaker than that of Evil Geniuses. So these first couple of team fights are going to be very important for them. Yeah, it's going to depend a lot, obviously, on uh, 
who can land those spells? I mean, Snoopy coming in with a rupture. If that misses, that's one large amount of AoE CC out of the equation completely. So, going to be interesting to see once they do start to stack up for those kind of things, who comes out on top. As we see Yellow Pete here being gifted that red buff by Snoopy, and they are headed again down towards this bottom lane. The tower still alive, only hanging on by the skin of its teeth for now, though. And Dragonborn, to be honest, from uh, Draven probably only need two hits to take it. I imagine that, the, the, you know, EG want to slow down this tower being taken. They want to give Yellowpeed more time to farm himself yeah. back up. He is behind. He does have a kill to the two assists of Hosan, but, you know, 40 CS is a noticeable difference. And I think they're just trying to, you know, get him back into this matchup before they're comfortable pushing fights. And we know evil geniuses can do that. They can stall and until that they want to pick a fight. All of this slowing down of pace, though, means Maluno's starting to fall a little bit behind in his farming. Uh, a few moments ago, it was a slightly higher number. It was around about 20 CS. And he's starting to pick it up as he's in the jungle right now. But the amount of pressure they're putting on him as he gets jumped into the middle lane. This is bad for Maluno. He's going to go down there. And you see the power that can come out of that Renekton with Frog and hammering away from that backside. They're now going to make their way off from that as the uh, Draven Ultimate did come across to try and do some damage. But just a little bit too little, too late. That will give EG the kill advantage. And they may try and squeeze in for a three-man gank on this bottom lane. But that would be counter. Leona's there. Shushe is waiting inside of the brush, which they've now just seen since he uh, threw his Q through the acceleration gate. There's the rupture just to force him to back off, and that will be it for now. As I say, that Froggen and Spontex going head-to-head -head here in the middle. You can see that Froggen did actually use his ultimate. Spontex is not finished here. He's going to dive in there. He can't quite get him for that last charge, and that will be a flash away. Froggen survives. The flash away, so, so powerful. Got him away from Spontex's Crescent Slash, his E, and I think if that damage had hit, it may have just been enough to pick up the kill. I'm taking a look five ranks into the Crescent Slash. It would have hit for around 220, 230 damage. And I think that would have been enough to kill Froggen. So an amazing flash. There's literally no other word to describe it. The very millisecond it needed to land, got him out of range, got him to safety, and he survived. But that does bode well for Dragonborns. You know, Spontex fell behind in lane, was under a lot of pressure for very, very early, and at least you can see he can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Froggen in these 1v1 situations. So let's take a look now after uh, a couple of crazy minutes. How things are looking now in the grand scheme. Three to zero in turrets. All the outer turrets now down. Uh, I'll tell a lie. There's a bottom one still there. <laughs> in the middle of the top, it's the inner turret that went down in that top lane, which you know, all credit to Wicked again. He's doing a fantastic job with this Renekton. Actually going in again on towards Maluno, forcing him away. Got that Sunfire Cape built up after the Hex Drinker earlier on. Uh, in terms of other items, we've got the Aegis of the Legion now finished there for Snoopy, Locket of the Iron Solari for Shen. The AD carries Bloodthirsters for them both, but we see that Hosan with that extra BF sword in there. A Zeal just being picked up there by Yellow Pete on Varus. Uh, the mid lane, we've got that Gunzo's Rage Blade plus the Nasher's Tooth done for Kale and Bloodthirster Brutalizer for Jace. Evil Geniuses are playing very, very smart now. For 20 minutes, we've just seen them pushing lane, but like individually, you know, they've, they've been uh, forcing Dragonborns to react to their aggression, and, and Dragonborns aren't really committing too many members to counter pushing these lanes. So because they've lost that early map control and they lost early towers, it means they're falling a little bit further behind the longer this game goes. We're talking about Wicked's Renekton, and uh, we touched on it as the game starts. Wicked has not played a mana-based champion once in the LCS now. He's played a Carly doesn't twice. Doesn't like mana. Yeah, it doesn't like mana. Carly twice and Shen. So two ninjas. I was making jokes saying it would be awesome if you played a third ninja. But he played Renekton, just cool down, you know, rage dependent champion, so or Fury rather. So uh, interesting that he, he he's playing slightly non mana based champs. As we see that the dragon was taken away by Evil Genius as they lost that last one. So that's a, another big pickup for them after losing the last one. They got the timer down it, however, and they were able to pick this one up. The question is here, can they defend this middle turret? The uh, minion wave made short work of there by four of them. And that's a good sign for them. They should be able to hold onto this turret without too many problems. The amount of wave clear that they've got. AoE, you know, AoE damage from every single one of their champions, even Sona to a lesser extent, if she starts throwing out her Qs, you know, hit a couple of champions at once. Uh, it's going to be difficult to siege towers against that lineup. You know, you're just going to get those the, the, the AoE splash from Kale plus the piercing arrow from Varus, which is going to start hitting a lot harder now. You can see working towards the static uh, Shiv as well. So it's going to be difficult to siege towers, but they do have Jace, which is going to be very nice for that long, the, the long range poke. If they don't get enough poke and commit quickly, Sona's just going to heal them all though.
Certainly some very interesting moments still to come in this one. Gold is sitting at a, a 3,000 difference in favor of EG. We can see that Dragonborn's there. Always scary when you're uh, alone and you see that acceleration gate go down and uh, the, you know, the sound of people going through it is more than two or three men. That's a, a good sign to get away from that one because they're coming and they're coming quick towards you. Snoopy and Yellow Pete have defended their turret and we see that the bottom outer turret has gone down. So I can now finally say all outer <laughs> turrets down for EG. Yeah, you know, that's just so much map control. They're crawling into the lead, you know, pulling ahead a little bit by a little bit, increased that gold lead to about 4,000 now, just shy of it. And the fact that they took that previous dragon just tells you that they'll, they've now stamped control on the entire sort of 50, 60% of the map up to the river and just past it. There's no towers for Dragon Monster to fall back to. They've got relatively good ward coverage. You can see some vision there um, around the river entrances of the DB players. And you know, Dragonborns, they've just got defensive wards. They have no idea what evil geniuses are doing on their side of the map. And they're playing reactionary. They need to make something happen. They need to push a tower, or they need to pick a fight on Dragon to be able to close this gap that uh, EG is pulling ahead from. Certainly looking very good. So looking EG style right now, EG. Yeah. I mean, this is this is typical evil geniuses play. This is the whole, you know, get your advantage and slowly but surely push that advantage home for a win. It's still open to errors. That's that goes without saying. I mean, this game is definitely not over by now. It's not just a, a long drawn out one sided definite. This could still be won by Dragon Bones, but it's going to take some brilliant play from them. And, you know, Froggen is just pulling further and further ahead. We've seen him falling a little bit behind in the mid lane as he goes aggressive onto Maluno. This could be bad for Maluno. We'll see how he's able to deal this one. Will Shadow dash away. Froggen quite happy to let him uh, back off from that. He'll take the CS that was there, put down some damage, and wait for the rest of his team to come around. But, you know, you can see the top side of the jungle, the ward coverage, they're starting to get good vision there. You can see that Crepo now got that Oracle Elixir, that Five minute timer using it as much as he can here to get ward after ward in position, clear out what's being put down by Dragonborns just to give them that even more map control, uh, certainly over this top side of the jungle as well as we are going to see Wiki going on Spontex. And we'll see very aggressive from Evil Genius as they come from the backside, put down the Rupture, which did catch Hosan up, and nobody else from EG decided to commit to that engagement. They weren't 100% sure where the rest of the Dragonborns members were, so wisely they just back away. Wicked eats that Shock Blast to the face and and it does nothing. With the amount of HP and armor that he has, Jace is not a threat to him right now. Yeah, that Warmog's obviously been finished up, uh, finished up by Wicked on the last time. I think he might have even bought it outright. I don't remember seeing the different parts of that Warmog uh, actually being picked up there. But we are going to see EG now coming in towards this inner middle turret. And you can see that Dragonborn's not really able to do too much about it. His move going to get hit there. We are seeing Froggen up on that top side as well, being engaged upon by Spontex. But the rest of EG coming in. Spontex going to try and get away. He'll flash over in towards his base. No kills coming down from that one, even though Shushi did fall very low. Low mover obviously did die um, on, on, the, the on the right hand side on the tower. Yeah, you know, it was just uh, Evil Genius is once again saying, look, we've, we've got enough damage, we've got enough crowd control that even if somebody gets targeted by the turret for an extended period of time, just throw that intervention onto them, prevent the damage, block it out, and carry on pushing. So, you know, smart play from EG. They're just using every single strength that their team comp has to their advantage. And interestingly, look at the upgrade, the tier 3 upgrade for um, Froggen's Kale. He's decided to go for the Fura, which gives him the movement speed buff as Dragon Balls contest. Hosan uh, getting hit by the Crescendo. Byron has been picked up here by EG. What can Dragon Balls do? They're doing decent damage in here, but you see Spontex just being absolutely destroyed. Hosan now going through. This is dangerous for EG. Jace getting involved in it. Wicked gonna get knocked away. The Rupture will land onto Maluno. Will EG turn him? fight this one. Yes, they did for a brief moment and then realized that they had to back off. Snoopy goes down to Hosan. Wicked gonna dive into the back. Gets himself the Shen kill. They focus down Hosan. He will die up the top side. They've all just literally fell to pieces there, Dragonborns, as they came chasing. It looked promising in terms of health. But, you know, even just 10 seconds running away with that Baron buff on gives you so much nice regen on your health that you just turn around and go at it again. And what great play from Renekton there. You could see Dragonborns was moving 
coming in, both teams moving as solid units. They were, you know, sliding through the, the river, getting towards that blue buff as quickly as possible. And Wicked just said, I know I can get that kill onto the back line. I know I can shut him down. Use the slice and dice, dive through everybody, and that caused the confusion for the Dragonborns. Hosun continued chasing. I said at the beginning of the game, he's an aggressive AD. He likes to be deep, you know, behind enemy lines. And that was what he was chasing. You know, he carried on chasing as the rest of his team got split up. Shushe ran left. Maluna got shut down in the back line. Hosan was, you know, up a creek without a paddle and got shut down. And an absolutely perfect fight for evil geniuses. We well, can see there that Kale, obviously being played by Froggen here, finishing off that frozen mallet. So, you know, we talk about Froggen and his, his builds can sometimes be a little bit funky. You're not going to be able to escape from a Kale who's got that down. Look at that. Pink Ward placed down on top of Spontex. Froggen losing no health. Absolutely nothing at all. Started the fight. Pink Ward down for vision, intervention on himself. I don't know if Spontex even seen that Pink Ward was down. He couldn't really go anywhere to be fair either. There was no flash available, but he pretty much just resigned himself in that fight. Hosan's picking a battle with Froggen, trading a lot of damage, throws out the ultimate, but Froggen seems to be surviving it. Now he could be in trouble though. We see uh, Shushe coming in there, and that is the kill for Hosan. But look how low he went. That was without the intervention, which he would have been a dead one. Uh, that's for sure. Is EG going to get engaged on here? Yeah, it does look like it. The Solar Flare is out from Move It, but there's no attack damage to back it up. Hosan is trying to get back as quickly as possible as Shushe moves in from the top lane. Now move it lands a very nice uh, stun onto Yellow Pete. They're going to carry on fighting as Snoopy is up in the top lane trying to duel on Shushe. They've lost move at first. Now Hosan is left without protection. There's nobody to keep him alive. He gets dropped low. The rest of Dragonmon's fall. Shushe picks up one kill but a triple for Yellow Pete. Yeah, triple for Yellow Pete. That's just showing you. I mean, I mean, he's died at the end, but still, the power of them. Look at the health bars still on EG. Crepo didn't die in that. Snoop is full HP. Wicked full HP. Managed to get double buffs. I think it was Hosan who had the uh, double buff on him there uh, from that last one. So just an overall, you see the difference there between EG and Dragonborns. When they get into these big fights, EG can out-tank them and then out-damage them. And also the focus is a lot better as well. You see EG, they pick one single target, jump onto it. So the in-game calls just seem to be a little bit more on the same page. Dragonborn's, you know, uh, uh, move it. He threw out his ultimate, that solar flare, before anybody was even there. It was just him and Maluno, you know, Shen and Leona. You're not really going to stop an inhibitor. Then Hosan joined the party late after Shushe came in ar around from the side. They came in from different angles, weird positions, and were able to get uh, singled out and focused by the Evil Genius's members. Well, I think Wicked enjoyed being called Bricked last week because look at his build again. He is so, so tanky. 5-0-6 now on this Renekton. Um, and people might think about banning Renekton out against Wicked here as he sat in that brush. Shushe just going around the side. Maluno actually comes in, puts a ward on top of him. Wicked's got the Oracle on, just clears that one out. Not even scared uh, of Maluno and Shushe there. He's still hanging around. I mean, he's got Baron buff on. He's triple buffed right now is just too strong. They can't really do anything about it. Yeah, there's nothing that you can do against the crocodile. And even if you do, you know, get him relatively low, with his ultimate with intervention, it's just going to, you know, be completely unstoppable. You've even got Crepo in there with the Locket of the Iron Solaria. So any damage you do put onto him, it's just going to be e immediately, you know, negated by so many different routes. Dragonborns do pick up a dragon, uh, but when you're 10,000 gold behind, it's not a huge difference right now. Yep, I saw Jason uh, having a bit of a smile about that one, reminiscing on his awesome puns uh, from before in the qualifiers with the Dragon. It was something about dragon, a, a, a team, team kill. kill yeah, was, team yeah. kill when they picked up the Drake. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's something at least for Dragon Bones. Uh, like you say, it's, it's a lot of gold that they're behind, but it's something to give them a, a, a half shot maybe of staying in this game. I mean, it's 13 to 5 in kills, 6 to 1 in towers. They've got control of the entire map here, EG, and they're now now pushing in for the final inner turret, which stands in this bottom lane, but it's not standing for long. And something that I haven't noticed at all until this very moment, Mover doesn't have any boots at all. Ruby, Sidestone, Philo, and you know, that that's it. There's, there's nothing else there. So the movement speed is very, very lacking on his Leona. It's only 335, so he's not going to be able to react very quickly at all. You consider everybody else in the opposing team has their boost completed with the exception of Crepo's Sona. She's going to throw out her, her Song of Celerity, her E, give a movement speed buff to everybody, and it's going to be difficult for Mover to land that dash and that stun onto a, the target that he wants to. 
And you can see the difference that that CS has made. Obviously, the 10 assists uh, probably shouldn't be uh, underestimated there either. But that Lockett of the Iron Solari in there offering so much to the team. And Leona's really got none of that, but she does have that CC to offer in there. So we'll see if Dragonborns can hold on to anything more. They've got super minions coming up the middle. Froggen is actually going to split this top lane off now. And they're going to be pushing with four men in towards that bottom inhibitor turret. Draven going to be the one that goes top. But we've seen it before. If uh, Froggen turns around, here. See, he puts the ultimate on himself. Absolutely rips Hosan to pieces. Completely, completely destroyed. Hosan could do nothing in that engagement. Froggen not afraid to blow the cooldown and intervention, using it early in a fight, avoiding the damage, allows him to continue pushing and secures an inhibitor turret as the rest of Evil Genius has now continued the siege in this bottom lane. Shushe thinking about picking a fight. He's gone aggressive on Froggen. He's gone and actually flashed his way in there. This could be very interesting as Froggen not quite going to be able to escape from that one. But what does it allow? It lets EG put more pressure down on these bottom lane this move actually going to get knocked up there Shen going to shadow dash right into the middle solar flare comes down there's a crescendo to counter the ultimate came out of virus as Spontex gets destroyed I think it was nommed in that process from Snoopy as well they focus in towards Maluno mover is still alive somehow and now Jace coming in as well but it's EG who pick up those two kills uh, in that bottom lane and then take the inhib turret as well yeah they knew that you know Hosan was still you know he was dead from the previous engagement they knew that Shusha was low so at best it was always going to be a three-man defense for Dragonborns and they just brute forced their way onto that tower. So no towers with the exception of those Nexus ones still up. Every single inhibitor is exposed. The mid lane inhibitor will be respawning soon and Dragonborns are going to have to defend every single one of them with their lives if they have any hope of stopping evil geniuses. But look at that. Two Randian's omens completed on the side of EG. When they do commit to the fight, when they have Snoopy and Wicked behind enemy lines, it's just going to be so difficult to do anything at all. Yep, and the interesting thing now coming in is Baron, who, as you can see, in the top left there is up and alive right now and EG obviously taking that last one have that timer down not too much in terms of vision around the Baron itself currently uh, so we'll have to see how that's all dealt with you can see that Crepo getting himself in there he's got a stack of wards after putting down I think three there has got four still in his inventory so he's going to be stacking wards up all over the place as Hosan just has a bit of a peek just to make sure that that Baron is there because they can't really even afford to put wards down right now they know that they're going to get cleared out as soon as they do. There are two oracles uh, running on EG, so whenever they put either of these wards down, they're just going to be gone straight away and they're going to end up in the same scenario having no vision. Yeah, there's, there's nothing that you can do. Once a team can, you know, spend a lot of money on those oracles and simply uh, negate any map vision you have, you need to have that, that game sense, that sixth spidey sense as it were. This is what they're doing. This is where they're going. Wicked takes a little bit of poke from that shock blast combo. It actually did a little more than I was anticipating, but still not necessarily a huge amount as Snoopy's going to land this rupture. If it does catch anybody, they're going to be in trouble and Mover seems to be the target. Yeah, they've gone in on to Mover. We are going to see Stan United coming in. Dragonborn's going to go for one, maybe last fight here as the ultimate comes out of Varus. Dragonborn's decently tanky. Crescendo comes across. is starting to fall low. The targeting a little bit weak here from EG, but slowly and surely Surely they are working their way through. There's another kill for Varus. Triple kill in the end coming out for Yellow P. That leaves a very hurt Maluno. Hosan, who's in all kinds of trouble. Crepo going to flash over in there. Can they pin him down? Do they even want to pin him down? Do they care about pinning him down? No, they don't. They're going to go straight through the middle. Hosan got zoned out and left that fight so early on. The Dragonborns had no consistent damage dealer. And they spent so much time focusing Snoopy. Look at the HP bars of the carries. Yellow P is untouched. Wicked is untouched touch they, they blew everything they had to try and kill Cho'Gath and you're not going to win fights if that is your target so the Dragonborn's forced out of that one they've lost their mid inhibitor and EG might try to finish the game up right here I don't think they've got the damage here between the two of them to stop this push coming out from EG at the end of the day they're all five men first Nexus turret is already down second one will fall quickly afterwards intervention put on there by Froggen they're hammering away on the Nexus and evil geniuses going to be taking down Dragonborn's here to win their third Third game in the European LCS. Great, great play from Evil Geniuses. They were in control of the matchup from the very early phase. It, they, they gave Dragonborns the respect that they needed. And after you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes, they turned the pressure on and they didn't let go until they, they won the matchup. Not the start that Dragonborns were really looking for here in this season. But that's enough for us here at the Casa Desk. For now, we're going to throw it over to Demon and Jason and they're going to break down all that action.
Yes, thank you very much, Joe. And, well, we are here on the Casa Desk. As you may know, I'm a little bit nasal, I'm sounding. Sound uh, lovely, like Barry White almost. A little, I'm not quite down that low <laughs> right yet. So, oh, yeah. I could, I could possibly get there after, after a little bit, but... Uh, Interesting game there to start with. Not a bad showing for Dragon Ball. It's their first game here in the League Championship Series, and they didn't do too bad. I mean, it was 10 minutes the game was looking still very even. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, they had a huge CS uh, lead in that bottom lane. They kept up in gold the entire time until that one moment where they traded that dragon for those two turrets, and it kind of started to slip out of their hands. But yeah, I completely agree. Very strong showing. And I mean, Dragonborns, they're not looking weak at all for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, to the point that our highlight probably wasn't really until the Dragon, uh, the Baron fight, sorry, which was what, 28 minutes into it, 30 yeah. minutes into it? Well, I mean, does that sound like a typical EG game? Yeah, I know it does, I know it does. The highlight doesn't come till about the half hour mark, but but Jason, take us through. I mean, this was the fight really that uh, we need to build up to this one because Move Air had already been picked off, so he wasn't really involved in the key fight. Yeah, so it's pretty much a 4 5 this situation. Uh, EG already picked up the Baron, it was 4-2, and the goal lead, it was 43.3 thousand to 37, so it really wasn't too far out of the favor of mm -hmm. Dragonborns. They had a chance to come back, but let's go and take you in the replay and just show you how it kind of slipped away here as we will go ahead and start this off. And you see, they have this Baron, and the big part, uh, the big problem, actually, let me take you out real quick, is to show that Shushay, no really in position to help. We have Muvert currently sitting in the middle of his base, and then we'll see this fight break out right here. And the real problem is, is when Spontex goes into the back line right here, he's 1v5 pretty much at this situation against a Krepa who has an Oracle, so when he does try to stealth up, it won't matter in any way, and he just gets blown up. And uh, as, as Demon and I were watching this, we're kind of confused, because Dragonborns, they continue to chase this fight. They have EG, you know, pretty low on the back foot trying to run away, but the thing was, is that they didn't have all the damage they really need to. EG had that Baron up to get that sustain to keep alive, and we'll see it just kind of develop here in this situation. And and one thing that really Wicked does, he kind of goes for a man mode play right here. He uh, he kind of sits back, he kind of heals off of these uh, off this blue buff here, and he goes straight into the backline right for Maluna, who you know really didn't expect that slice and dice to come through. And then you have Yellow Peak going head to head against Shushay, and he gets a really nice sidestep right here, which uh, oh sidestep I mean he just stops moving for an auto attack and picks <laughs> up that kill, but stays alive. They get four kills for nothing. And it just gave him that huge lead to keep uh, keep the game going. I thought it was quite good, the fact that they used that bush by the blue. And as soon as they got into it, Wicked just turned straight, went for the back yeah. there, straight for Maluna, just completely split them apart. So really nice place, and EG really picking up another win there. Something, you know, obviously at the end of last weekend, they ended up with a loss against SK mm -hmm. Gaming. How how do you think that would have affected them? You know, obviously going through the week, do you think that motivates them in you know, the fact that they've ended up with a loss? Oh. And I know I went out with them that night, and, you know, <laughs> actually both teams, SK, and EG were really in high spirits, so they were enjoying their time here in Cologne, but they seem to have you know, doubled their efforts. I know they've got their apartments sorted out here in Cologne. They seem to be settling down now into the League Championship Series. Yeah, that's really a big thing, is that they finally have their place. They're finally all together. They have the ability to practice. Uh, I was talking to Snoopy last week, and he was mentioning they didn't really get to practice much as a team. They kind of just theorycrafted their entire mm. setup for that weekend, but now they have that ability to practice. They want to show everyone that they're a very strong team. I, I'm sure they're looking forward to the game versus SK to really get their revenge on them. And I mean, I'm kind of happy to see, you know, Wicked playing some new champions. We saw him playing pretty much a solid three last season. Now he's playing a couple of different more. I even have the, the Sona Varus play, which, I mean, <laughs> the entire uh, last weekend, they played Caitlyn Lulu every single game. So they're kind of spreading out a little bit, showing the power of other AD carries. So, you know, EG looking very strong. Well, talking about how settled they are, of course, I do know that through various tweets that Crepo got the biggest room in the house. <laughs> so let's pass over to Shox on the stage, who is there with Crepo. Yeah? All right. Hi, I'm here with Krepo. Hi, Krepo. Now, uh, going to a champion select um, against the Dragonborns, they immediately banned out three mid-champions. Can you take us through that champion select process from your side? Basically, coming into the game, we knew they were going to target at least two bans on Froggen. Uh, we didn't expect a TF ban, but that kind of indicated that they didn't want us to have any globals. And we were looking for first pick Kale. Uh, so that we ban our other like OP champions. We targeted Chushe's Vi as well, then the Xin Zhao to stop Dragonborns from their like signature early, early pressure uh, momentum type of play. And we actually forced them into a poke comp then with a lot of global uh, presence. And it actually worked out like the kill pick we got, we predicted that would go, they would go Chen. I, then we thought they would go for a Tarek, so like an aggressive bottom lane. But it ended up being a, a Leona lane. But all in all, we predicted pretty much everything and we, we managed to pick a pretty safe bot lane early, so we could counter pick both top and mid, and then uh, d like deal with it that way. And they'll keep Kale open as long in multiple positions. All right, thank you. Now that was obviously a great showing. Now later you're going to play versus SK Gaming again. Um, how did you prepare specifically after that loss last week? 
basically it was a new strategy we were trying, uh, something different. Uh, I don't think we, we, we needed that much uh, like analyzing of the game afterwards. We pretty much know, knew where we went wrong. Uh, we have made some tweaks to that strategy if we ever use it again. And we're just more ready for, for them, I hope so. And uh, I think it'll be another close game tonight. Thank you very much. Now that was Crepo from EG. After the break, we're going to have a short break. We're going to see the Copenhagen Wolves get a chance at revenge versus SK Gaming. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 